Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Kangen Omega Chapter 132. It's been a pretty busy day today. We started off with the reaction to this week's Kangen Chapter. Then I just put out the review for the first of this month's Record of Ragnarok chapters about an hour and a half ago. And now here we are with the review for this week's Kangen Chapter. If the... Uh, if the translation for the second Ragnarok chapter comes out today, this may be the busiest day I've had since starting this channel. Um, but yeah, in this week's Kengen chapter, we got pretty much what I predicted we would get after how the last chapter ended off, which was a flashback showing off Oma training with the Kurei clan and how he learned the Kurei techniques. Now, we get a very interesting distinction here, a little bit of lore for the Kurei clan. Apparently, they have two different schools of techniques, the family tradition and the clan tradition. Why are these names so similar? Like, like they could literally be synonyms? I don't know. To put it in more simple terms, they have assassination arts and then they have combat arts. Uh, for example, the lion bite is an assassination art while pretty much all the stuff that Ryan pulled out against Alan was the combat arts. And Oma has been taught the combat arts because he's not interested in learning how to assassinate people. Uh, so that's just kind of a, a, an interesting little bit of information about the Curry clan, a little tiny bit of world building. Um, we also see that Oma is doing the same motionless pre-initiative training that Kuroki did. Uh, now... There's a little bit of a difference here between how Oma and Kuroki were doing it. For starters, Fusui does not have her face obscured. That was something that Kuroki had his friend do when he was training, so that he would not be able to read his face to tell when he was shooting. Now, maybe because Fusui is an assassin, she's not using live rounds in this situation. Maybe it's a bit different. Maybe the Kurei are better at, you know, they, they train to hide their intent when it comes to assassination. I could see that, maybe. Um, and also, Fusui is shooting from a distance and is shooting a lot of different shots. She's firing with a pistol, so Oma's blocking a lot of shots. While with Kuroki, he was training at almost point-blank range against, like, a single-shot rifle. Uh, so, a little bit of difference in their training, but it is interesting to see that this seems to sort of be the traditional style of learning how to do pre-initiative. We know a Guido seemingly just kind of learned how to do it, but, you know, he's a Guido, so that makes sense. Um, but it is interesting to see Oma learning how to do this, and I feel like the fact that he didn't undergo pre-initiative training prior, like when he was training under Nico, as far as we can tell, he didn't have pre-initiative during the Annihilation Tournament. Um, it does go to show that the gap between him and Kuroki was still pretty big, even if Oma were at, like, peak health. I, I think he would have put up a better fight against Kuroki, um, and would have even had, like, a somewhat realistic chance of winning, as opposed to, uh, the actual fight that happened where his chances were next to nothing. Um... Just goes to show that pre-initiative is kind of like the thing when you want to get into the very tops of the verse. Uh, at least for, you know, the main Kengen series. Gotta know pre-initiative, gotta train to learn to uh, know pre-initiative. Um, so that's just kind of cool. We also get a little funny interaction here uh, between Ario and Oma about Ario being like, What the fuck? You were just playing around with Carla and didn't plan on marrying her. I'm gonna kill you. Um... That, that sort of stuff. Um, and it was really nice. I feel like we haven't gotten sort of a nice page like that in Omega in a while. I feel like a lot of Omega has been missing kind of the soul, the life that was present in a lot of Ashura. And I felt like that was back, at least in this part of the chapter. Uh, now, we get some more fighting between Oma and the Long. It's pretty alright thus far. I will say that I like how the tactics being used in this fight are pretty different from just about any other fight we've seen. It, it feels, it flows, just sort of looks different from most other fights that we've seen in Kengen. So I kind of appreciate that. Um, now, eventually, towards the end of the chapter, 
Homa lands a mighty blow against Lo Long. I think this is the first attack that Lo Long has taken. The Curry family tradition Heaven Shaking Supreme Fang, which seems to be a very beastly elbow to the back of the lower head and neck. I'm fairly confident that a strike like that would definitely put down most people. You could maybe kill someone with something like that. Well, you know, it's the Kure clan, so it's just kind of how it goes. Uh, even our non-assassination arts can be super lethal. Um, now, Heaven Shaking Supreme Fang. I feel like Sandrovich saw a lot of people complaining about, like, hard slam and leg thrust. So he decided to make, like, the most over-the-top mouthful name of any technique in the series. I mean, Heaven Shaking Supreme Fang. That takes me a few seconds to say the whole thing. Um, it's quite the mouthful. Almost as much of a mouthful as uh, the names of all my patrons. Special thanks to Fuse, Neo, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, K God, Chris Redfield, Scratch23, Rat, Ryzen4K, Artist, Mac Campaign, Wave of Manga, and Sam the Ace. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at some point in the video, or you want to get access to reviews for Saul Leveling and the Boxer, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Now, although this heaven-shaking supreme thing would probably put down quite a few people, Lolong stops his fall and just immediately follows up with another attack against Oma. And we see that Lolong is kind of bothered by this. He does kind of crack his neck a little bit. At the very least, the attack hurt him a little um and Oma says like god damn like even that did not really hamper him that much this guy is a genuine monster hence the name I assume um and Lolong says this is fairly entertaining while uh his eyes look like they're a little shaky and uh some of his hair is coming undone in a very similar fashion to a previous infamous fighter that makes me mildly concerned. Um, one of my biggest concerns about Lo Long has been that he was going to do the epic crazy jobber face and be like a complete psycho or some shit, uh, which is what I don't want. I want Lo Long to just be kind of normal, relatively. We know there is something that is cause for concern about him um, that, you know, freaked Carlos out. They had to stop him when he was intervening between Nicholas and Akoya. I don't think that Lolong is like a, a wide-eyed, uh, tongue-flaring psychopath like Lou. I think that when Lolong gets like super serious and in the zone, he gets bloodlusted. And he gets super fucking violent. Maybe not violent enough to kill someone, but probably violent enough to, like, cripple someone. Or very severely injure them. Uh, a way that would maybe end their fighting career. Um, and hopefully, that is what's going to be happening. Is Lalong is, is seemingly probably going to be getting kind of serious now. Uh, he did change his stance to Salat. And it was like, ooh, Lalong's taking this guy seriously. Yeah, no, that's Lolong is interpreted like I should not be doing like the the hands in pocket casual elbows and shit that he was doing when he was stopping Nicholas versus Akoya. It's I'm having like an actual fight against this guy. Now, after that elbow, it's like, oh, this guy is, is really strong. I should probably take him seriously. In fact, Lolong actually says a line in the chapter very similar to Kuroki's when he was fighting Oma where uh, Kuroki said something along the lines of, Nico, he truly is your pupil, my blood boils. Um, Lalong says that his blood hasn't boiled like this in quite some time. So, you know, more parallels to Kuroki. But, uh, yeah, I think Lalong is, uh, is going to start taking this a little bit more seriously next chapter. Now, assuming that that doesn't take the form of some really dumb shit like Oh, I know the Nico style, or oh my divine removal Guihun demon, whatever. Um, it's that he's going to start using some other martial arts now. Um, my theory, as you know, has been that Lolong practices 
either a number of martial arts, all of the martial arts, not like literally all, but like a lot of the martial arts of the other Purgatory Fighters. He can just copy other people's martial arts. He's basically Chiba, but not a jobber, hopefully. Um, and whenever he is in a serious fight, he uses the exact techniques and style that are best fitted to the opponent. And I feel like he's probably going to be doing that in the next chapter. I assume since Lolong was someone who fought off assassins like Kuroki before and was then a bodyguard in the underground, I assume that Lolong may have had bouts with the Kurei clan before and may be somewhat familiar with their techniques. If not, well, he just saw Ryan use them to murder Alan not that long ago, so he's probably figured out some kind of way to counter them anyway. Uh, now, we are three chapters into the fight, four if you count the entrance, um, and it doesn't really feel like it's anywhere near ending. We are maybe halfway through it, and I don't have any issue with that. I'm fine with this fight being long, as long as it's good. Uh, and so far, it's pretty decent. It still feels like it's kind of warming up. Um, the good parts have been pretty good, uh, so when this shit starts getting crazy, Lelong gets really serious, Oma starts using the Nico style, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a very good fight. I just hope that it is the best in the tournament. I want this fight to be a lot better than the other fights in the tournament. Um, hopefully one of the better fights in Kengen, just overall. Uh, so I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. So with that, that's all I have to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kengen Omega chapter reactions and reviews every week. If you're watching this and you haven't already subscribed, you definitely should. I guarantee if any non-subscribed people, you know, subscribe, uh, we would reach our subscriber goal of 4,000 by the end of the year in no time. If you enjoyed discussing Kangen Omega with other people, or you're just a fan of the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.